Okay, now for the PTO clutch. Look right here is a slot. There's a slot coming in from the bottom down here. And the price should be this one. Here's one, see? Now, <clears throat> back in there is a gap. You can stick a feeler gauge into and check the gap on these clutches. When you okay, so when you put an 18,000 speeder gauge in, you should feel some resistance. And this is nothing. It's way too big. Now the gap on the other side, I can't even get the feeder gauge in. So you got a bolt here. You got a bolt up here, and one down here on the side here. I get you a good look at them. Here's one of them right here. And the top one's up here. But you can take and try to pull them in or adjust it, you know, so it's 18 thousandths all the way around. So with that side over there being too tight, I'll start by loosening it just a little bit, the ones on that side. You want to make sure you check it in all three spots. Okay, now I tried over here. This side, I can't get it in there at all. Nine thousandths will fit. Um, loosen these, this side of the bolts up a little bit and try to get it all 18. Once you set one slot and go around, you got to go around a couple times checking because it'll all kind of move a little bit on you. You want to try to make sure you get 18 thousandths everywhere. Okay, now when you adjust these bolts, <clears throat> don't turn them very far because just a wee little bit makes a big difference. And if you uh, tighten this one down, it could open the gap on the other side or vice versa or whatever. So that's why you got to go around multiple times. And an 18 thousandths feeder gauge, you want it to fit in there and just have ever so a little bit of drag on it. You don't want it to be too tight. Just that wee little bit can make a big difference. Okay, that's pretty good. Maybe just a wee little bit snug. But let's check the other ones first. Okay, I went around these several times. And like I say, you don't really want to... You don't want much drag on it. You want to be able to feel the drag, but you don't want to force it. That makes sense. If it's, the feeler gauge is too tight and won't move, then your gap's too small. It feels pretty good there. Let's try it in here. I don't know what you guys are seeing. But there. And then the third one over here. They all just have a slightest little bit of drag on it. And look at this. I just noticed that. bubbles coming out. Anyway, next thing we're going to do <coughs> is we'll just do an ohms check right here real quick. I think most clutches are three to four ohms, something like that. But that was, a like I say, this side of the clutch was 9,000. The other side was, when I measured, it was 21,000. So now it's 18 even all the way around. 18,000. What do you got here? 3.9, 3.8, so 4. So I think we're okay there. Now if you was OL like this, that means there's nothing there. And then when you touch it, if there was an open here, it would be bad. The clutch would be bad. 
or if he was like eight, 10, you know, if he was really high in resistance, the windings are probably going out the clutch, but I think everything's gonna be fine here. So another thing, most of these clutches like 13.2 volts or higher. So when you got one that the charging system don't work or you're having to mess with the battery every time you start it, you don't get full voltage to the clutch all the time. And it'll actually cause it to micro slip. And no, it's not going to make your clutch go out that day or nothing like that. But it could shorten the life of that clutch for half of you know, its life or whatever. It could take it away. 